Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Angela. Don't know what happened. Again, my video paused and didn't unpause. And I went through a whole video, showed almost all of my decks that I have to show you guys, and then it just went away. Or it wasn't there. But I came to the realization today that I haven't shown you my September decks yet. So, here we are. I've got nine decks to show you. Here is the Herb Crafters Tarot. And now I have even less daylight. <sighs> Book is amazing. Cards are like springy, but they remind me of fall as well. Sorry for my neighbors. Um, this is the reason I bought this deck, this peach card, Nine of Water. But there's so many cards in here that blow me away and just make me think that I've worked, make me feel like I've worked with these herbs before. Um, they are beautiful, 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 very beautiful fall deck to me. Gorgeous. And the book is also fantastic. It helps you, um, like for example, Ada Fire is ginger, and it gives you a description, and then it gives you ways you can work with ginger. So I thought that was pretty neat. Um, but that is the Herb Crafters Tarot written Artwork by Joanna Powell Colbert, written by Leticia Guffrey, U.S. Games, uh, is the publisher. <sighs> and then we have the Omega Land Hero. Nice talk tech box. It is, I thought that for the longest this was a indie deck, but it is published by U.S. Games. Um, created by Joe Badinsky, game by Karen Badinsky. And it is a game as well as a tarot deck. It's like a Doomsday Preppers kind of deck. Beautiful. And it's just cool. And different. And it literally looks like a Doomsday Prepper <laughs> tarot deck. It is typical size for U.S. games tarot. Normal, normally what you would see. Um, kind of like the size of, sorry, neighbor's dogs. Hold on a second. Okay, they may not be done. Anyway, that is the, no, I can't find the box. Omega Land Tarot is on uh, Amazon for like 10 bucks. I mean, 20 bucks. Super cheap. Like I said, I thought it was a... Uh, I thought it was a... Uh, and I had this video done pretty much before all that started. And the sun's going down now. So I'm really losing daylight. I don't know what happened to my computer. I'm going to have to get a new one. Can't get that to go in. Anyway, Omega Land Tarot on Amazon for like 19 bucks. Next we have Tarot of Oppositions. It is by Perluca Zizi and Michelle D'Alizio. Love the and it's published by um, Love Scarabero. I love their two-part boxes. Um, comes with a book, great little book. Comes with a couple cards. Um, these are the backs, and it's um, very plasticky feeling, very, um, there's the full, and then the darker reverse side of the full. I love that concept in this deck. It's very beautiful. It's one of those that surprised me because I could not wait to get it, and because of another couple decks in here, I'll just kind of, yeah, it's just sitting on the sidelines waiting to be worked with. Um, it is beautiful, and I do love it to pieces. So it will get worked with, just not at the moment. That is the Tarot of Oppositions by Los Scarabero. And the other one I was just showing just fell a little brown. I'm going to do a quick comparison real quick. This is the... Tear of the End of the Rainbow, also published by Liz Arbero. Um, it is, doesn't say who did it, but, hold on one second. Okay. 
these are the backs. Gorgeous. It is a very rainbowy, beautiful Celtic style to me deck. It reminds me of my Universal Celtic Tarot, also published by Love Scare Barrow. Um, it is beautiful. I just it's another one that I thought I would just be like dying to work with, and I haven't yet because of the other two that I'll show you here in a minute. I'm sure if you've seen my channel recently, you know which two I'm talking about. But this is beautiful. It's got like a little bit of the rainbow in every single card. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Gorgeous deck. But I do want to do a little comparison. Look at this guy. I love this card. Look at that. Beautiful. I want to do a little quick. So this is, I thought Love Scare Barrel had stopped doing tech boxes. They didn't because this is a new deck. If they do, they do the tech boxes and then they do the two part. If they do a tech box, it's a flimsier, smaller cardstock. <laughs> Whereas a two part box, the cards are much thicker and they're more tarot size than these. These are a little smaller, as you can see, a little smaller um, and much flimsier, but they both shuffle amazing. So it depends on, you know. If you if you're gonna get the tech box, you're always gonna get this size and this flimsier card. If you get a two-part low scare barrel, you're always gonna get this thicker, shinier card stock. Which I'm not my I'm not hating either one because they shuffle like a dream. <laughs> uh, both ways, like any way you want, it, they're gonna shuffle great. So yeah, that is the. Carol at the end of the rainbow. That's one of my favorite cards in there. It's beautiful. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful deck. I just, I thought I would be working with it, but I haven't. Because of the other ones I'm working with that I just cannot put down. So next we have, I sell by Los Guerrero, and it's a tech box, and it's a brand new deck, the Surrealist Tarot, and by Louis, Luigi D. Gian Marino, the Surrealist Tarot, strangest deck I've got in my collection, I will tell you that right now, and I have worked with it a little bit, not as much as I want to, again, because of a couple decks I'm going to show you here in a minute, here's the backs, and again, it's the smaller thinner cardstock, as is with a typical low scare barrel tech box. But the skies in this are to die for. The, the coloring in this deck is gorgeous. And there's a dog again. This one's funny because the clouds look like bread, loaves of bread to me. Just weird. But I love it. And it's gorgeous. And it makes you think. This deck is nothing in here that says right away Smith at all. It is out there and it makes you think outside the box and I, that's why I love it and it's gorgeous and it is the Surrealist Tarot by Low Scare Barrel published also gorgeous gorgeous deck and then we have the Alchemy Tarot I've worked with this a little bit um, it's my scary Halloween deck I got this year. It's scary <laughs> and creepy and gets straight to the point. It doesn't beat around the bush with anything. It is a pip deck, but the wands of this, this is the wand. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. It's all gorgeous. All gorgeous all the time. Gorgeous. There's the pentacles. Um, here's the cups. That's the pentacles, yeah. Um, and then we have the, the star. Yeah. The, yeah, these are gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous cards. And it's already almost dark. The Wheel of Fortune. Beautiful. If you want a dragony, twisted, dark death deck, this is it. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous deck. Gorgeous deck. 
So yeah, that is the Alchemy 1976 Tarot. Look at this death card. I mean, devil card. Come on. It's dark and twisty, and I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And that was published by Borneo. Never heard of them. This is the only deck I have by them. It is a thicker tuck box, so it is holding up. Um, it reminds me of my Stretch Tarot um, tuck box. So if you got that, you know what, what the tuck box feels like. Make it another drink before I show you the last three. Next, we have the Tarot Sugar Skull Tarot by David A. Ross. It is published by. <laughs> I think that's funny. It's pink inside. Published by something. I can't read that at the bottom. Something press. I don't know who that is or what that is, but it's gorgeous. I love the book. It's awesome. The cards are humongous. They are like cardboard, though, and they're still squared off. It's my only gripe about this deck. It reads beautifully. Um, the colors in it are that of like an old Western Americana Mexican combination. Um, it, it's awesome. And the colors are beautiful. At this. Yeah, it's a great deck. A great little reading deck. Beautiful. So that is the. Why do I keep dropping these? And the, you know what? The swords are these purplish pink colors. Probably my favorite color palette in there. Every color palette has something different. So, uh, I mean, every suit has a different color palette. I don't know what they're beating on. It's crazy. So, yeah, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous deck. So we're down to the last two. And the two I have not been able to put down this month. Or uh, September or October. Like, I started trying to work with the others for Halloween this year. And I went right back to the Ferent Pincher Tarot. It's amazing. I just, it's deep and dark. And <sighs> it's all the things. It's all the things. Um, it says Carpe Diem by F. Pinter. Uh, F. Pinter, Frank Pinter, is the creator of this art that was then turned into a tarot deck. There are some extra cards. This is a two-part low Scarabero deck, which means the cards are glossier, they're thicker, and they're bigger. And this deck is amazing. Amazing. I have not been able to put it down. I just went back to it this week after like two days. Look at that, eight of, or five of cups. Just, uh, I'm not, like after two days of working with a Halloween deck, I'm like, nope, got to go back to the Pinter Tarot <laughs> because it is amazing. Amazing. I pulled this the other day um, for a nighttime spread. Uh, it was what should I think about as I go to sleep or how to bring out something in my dream and it was the nine of cups and it was like and it does talk about in the book about music is the the thing that opens our soul and releases things and I thought that was beautiful I'm just like the book is I mean it is a typical little scarabero there's like five languages but it gives you a brief description of what this person the, the artist was like and just it blows me away every time. I'm just like, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, and I guess he passed away in 2008. Um, so for some reason, knowing that I, for some reason, it felt the need, the overwhelming need to have this deck because of that. Um, it is gorgeous and it reads fantastically. Um, to me, it is not a typical RWS deck, but that's one of the reasons I love it. Because it's not your typical. Um, yeah, it's just gorgeous. Gorgeous. I love the backs. I love the Crocker DM across the back. Beautiful. So the last deck, the deck that has brought me to tears, brought me chills. Um, don't know why. 
It is not my aesthetic. Something told me to buy it. It's the first Liminal 11 publishing company deck that I bought. And it is the new chapter tarot by Catherine Briggs. Open it at the bottom. It is beautiful. It has the new chapter logo here. The book. <laughs> Mind blowing. It's a hardback, beautiful, beautiful book. Beautiful. I have nothing bad to say about this deck. The, the cards are even smaller, much smaller. They're almost as small as bridge size cards. <sighs> but this deck. <laughs> um, it will call you out. It will. There's an extra card there. It is fan flipping tastic, this deck. I have no words. It's every time I pull a card from this, it's deep. It's so deep that you're like, I didn't even know I had that level layer of a level to me. And here it is. Uh, the, I, I get chills working with this deck because it's so deep and accurate. It's just, it's stunning. And of all the decks I've got in the month of September, this one and the Ferrant Pinter Tarot are the two that shocked me the most. Because I'm like, yeah, something's wiggling in my brain to get them, but not like overwhelming, but I'll go ahead and get them. And then I got them and it was just mind-blowing. Just like I did with the first tarot I bought, the first deck I bought this year was the Journey of the Sacred Bee. These two decks remind me of that in the fact that they're such mind-blowing, catastrophically changing certain things I've thought of before forever. Like, it's weird um, how it just completely changed a point of view I've had about certain things forever. I will never see them the same way again. And that's what this deck and the Prairie Country has done. Um, and I just, I cannot stop working with them. I back and forth almost every day. I'm working with one of these two decks. It doesn't matter that it's Halloween time of year. It doesn't matter. These two are the, the decks that I've been working with. And this Eight of Swords that I've said in my walkthrough, and I've said, I think I pulled it in a week ahead spread. Um, because I always resonate with the Hermit. The Eight of Swords is the card I always look at and look for in my cards. It's not a deal breaker, but it's usually my favorite card in any deck. This one reminds me of the Hermit, but he's trapped um, in his Hermit mate mode for so long. And I've gotten that message a lot this year that you're in this Hermit mode. Get out of it because you're going to feel like you're at some point you're going to feel trapped in there. And it's your own doing. Um, and I've been pulling this same card, and I'm like, mm, I am the hermit trap. <laughs> so, yeah, and then the book, you, you think you got some kind of layer here by looking at just the card, and then you start reading the book, and you're like, oh my god, it's even better. Anyway, if you guys can't tell, it's a toss-up between this and this as my favorite deck for September. Maybe they're both my favorite decks for September. Because they just blew my mind. Um, I don't know that I would use either deck for working with anybody else. Just because I've had such profound personal readings with them that I'm pretty sure that's why I got these decks. For my own personal um, spiritual involvement is the word I'm looking for. Evolvement. Because that's what they make me feel like. I'm evolving spiritually somehow uh, with using these two decks. And it's just... Oh, they're brilliant. Anyway, it's almost dark, and that is all my decks for that I got in September. Um, if you guys have any of these decks, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification button. So you're alerted to any future videos, and it's almost really quiet now that the video is almost over. Hilarious, because I've had to fight a lot of noises. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.